Uh, today we are with Spoit, Rogue's uh, new sign-on, um, and nice to see you. Uh, so my first question was, uh, your birthday was in April, um, mm -hmm. and we all know that you are like a huge, you have a huge name in social media, YouTube, Twitch, all of that stuff. Uh, let's be honest, I don't think that Rogue was like the only uh, offer on the table, but possibly was the best. Um, mm -hmm. What did Rogue's proposal had that others didn't? Um, well, like personally, I obviously followed the the whole scene as a you know as a spectator. So I was always like interested in like all these teams, how they like worked and other stuff. And I had uh, I had three offers basically, and I like scrimmed back and forth with all of them. And um, I think just the, the rogue offer felt just way better. I got introduced to the team way better. Like I, like Tristan or Safest, that's uh, the analyst in Rogue right now. He uh, contacted me in a very professional way, and it just it felt better the way they welcomed me into the team and uh, got me to travel with them. And everything just clicked a little bit better than the other teams as well. So that's why I went uh, with Rogue as I, as well as I saw that they had a good like um, potential as a team as well. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, your debut uh, with the squad um, came uh, at the Gamers Without Borders tournament. Um, you played yeah. against Wild, Heroic, and Victus. Uh, how was that experience? Especially, uh, it was not like top flag debut. It was like some more of like practice, maybe or yeah. Um, how did you feel in that uh, tournament? Um, so it was obviously the first. Uh... Um, like official with the team of course we were actually playing at boot camp so everyone wasn't really used to the, the new equipment and all of that kind of stuff but uh, the team bonding was great um, the team enjoyed it a lot but of course we weren't in our comfort really as, a, as in like individually players playing playing the game so I think we felt short on um, on that end as well as Rogue back then uh, in the officials back then are completely different from now. So the way we play, the way we communicate, all that kind of stuff. So, But it was a fun time and we learned from uh, the experience um, and we hope to give it another shot next time. Mm -hmm. um, so as I said, Spoit's name is like huge. Um, you are not like uh, a random guy uh, joining uh, the top flight. Uh, you are Spoit. Um, so I was... Thinking, thinking that maybe that added some extra pressure uh, to your shoulders. Uh, how did you feel in your first game against someone I'm gaming, which ended in a 6-8 loss? Um, and how have you evolved as a professional player in these first nine games? Um, I mean, back then as well, with um, the first play day, we felt um, like we were really like, it's just first game vibes, to be honest. Um, I mean, now we were way more comfortable in the way we play the game and, you know, play the game. Here we have a <laughs> guest, actually. We have Cry oh, here. Nice. Hello. <laughs> nice. Nice to yep. see Cry here. Nice. Um, yeah. Uh, I have a question related to you and Crying, um, so I'm going to yeah. ask it now. Um, so you joined Rogue, and obviously you had to change some of the roles. Uh, on stage mm -hmm. one, Crying was like more of like the uh, had the best entry numbers in the team. Uh, he had like more that job. Uh, he uh, mained Finca and Melusi. Um, now you have that entry role. Um, how did you work on that? Um, I mean, the thing with crying was that uh, in stage one, from at least what I know, he um, he, he he wasn't really supposed to be the one uh, playing entry. He he liked more playing like that kind of lurking flex role, as you could uh, probably see in a lot of these matches. So we had uh, people like Kanto and uh, Deepak entering a lot. But uh, now that I came in, uh, I decided to take over the the, the main entry role. So Crying could play this kind of flex role, and then we have Kanto on like a second entry with me. So and and right now it's working out pretty good. Mm -hmm. So um, I think we're happy with it uh, with how it is played right now, and we have seen some good results in uh, in stage two with finishing second place and now qualifying for the Berlin major. 
Yeah, nice. Uh, it was a really good uh, first stage for you. Um, you actually ended up like being the best player in in the in the stage. Uh, that's what stats say. Uh, some of the best numbers in entries, uh, getting more than a hundred kills. Um, so yeah, uh, it was a very very good debut. Um, now uh, you're heading to uh, Berlin. It's going to be your first international. Yeah. Um, uh, tournament. Uh, Deepik is the same for him. Um, so you are like not very experienced, but you also have Kanto and Leon uh, who have played in like lots of tournaments. Kanto is a world champion. Uh, how does yeah. that international experience help you? Um, for me and Deepik, it's going to be different. Uh, compared to Kanto and um, Leon, of course, because they got this this whole experience with other lands and and whatnot. But uh, we just hope to, like, we hope we hope this everyone feels good and um, that we share for each other and have uh, have fun. And I think everything should be fine. Nice. Um, you are also playing Berlin. Berlin is like uh, G2's. Um, it's like G2's home uh, major. Yeah, it's just. Yeah, I think it's like. 80 meters away. Yeah, it's it's super close actually uh, from the venue. Um, your first big game was against G2 on uh, on Bank. You won 7-1 yeah. that game. Um, yeah, and of course it, it was like your second game in European League, and then you like demolished G2. Um, yeah. How were you feeling? How was like? What was the first thing that was in your mind? Like, yeah, exactly. Um. Like to be honest, I was I was quite in shock about the result. To be honest, uh -huh. I wasn't I wasn't expecting a seven one. To be honest, um, but you know we we was really happy about the win. Uh, we just took it like any other game, um, and yeah, that's basically it. There's not much to say. We just played the the default siege and we yeah, ended up being the better team that day. Nice. Um, you had a really good uh, season overall, uh, but the last two yeah. games were a bit more uh, tricky. Um, you lost, uh, well, no, actually, you lost, yes, two pounds, and you won on overtime against Navi. Um, were you like exploring other options, or what happened in those uh, two games? Um, we weren't really stressing too much about um, those two games, to be honest. Um, like. It it would be uh, wrong to say that we didn't care really, but we did obviously care. But uh, those games were not as important uh, as, of course, the bigger games that actually, you know, were to qualify us for the Berlin major. Of course, the Pons one, uh, we managed to qualify in OT. We just needed one point, so that was obviously that was play the eight, if I remember correctly, and then we had Navi next play day. So um, yeah, but the Navi game was just like have fun, you know, don't. Like save a bit of strats for the Berlin Major. Don't like show a new map, of course, because uh, I think that was like the fourth time us playing uh, Clubhouse in EU League at that stage. So we just like run it back and play it default, and um, yeah, play together, do the fundamentals. Nice. Uh, now that you're talking about maps, um, European League is like a best of one format. Um, but yeah. in Berlin, if you go to the playoffs, you're going to play um, best of three games. Uh, we saw you guys playing uh, this format in the in the Gamers Without Borders tournament. Um, you actually played a best of five against Wild. Um, how do you see yourselves um, ahead of a possible best of three match and even a grand final, which would be best of five? Uh, I mean, we obviously gonna have a lot more, a lot um, prepared for the Berlin Major, uh, which a lot of teams are gonna have. I think the, a lot of teams are gonna change up, the, like change up strats, change up like how the way they play, all that kind of stuff. But you know, like I don't like to think about best of threes and best of fives and that all too much. Just focus on like one map at a time, and I think it should be fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. And my final question yeah. is about the Berlin Major. Um, you are in what everyone calls the group of death. Uh, you're sharing a group with Ninjas in Pyjamas, Exet and, and Damwon Kia. Uh, Damwon Correct. is like Apex's best team, NIP World Champions in 2021, Exet, that Brazilian-American combination. Um, how do you see yourselves going to the Major? And who do you think is going to cause you more trouble? Um, so, of course, it's going to be a really hard group 
I think it's five, uh, sorry, four teams that are uh, very close in skill. Um, that's trying to, you know, you know, qualify and uh, for the playoffs. So, um, um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be a hard games for sure. Uh, for some of us, not me though, uh, but for some of them, for the players in Rogue, it's, it's going to be a rematch uh, from Sweden Major, where the uh, where they lost against them on Kia. So that's going to be fun and uh, uh, fun for them. Uh, but to be honest, I have actually no idea because I haven't played against the teams before with my own team. So it's hard to say. Um, I hope we can be the better team that day, though. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I don't have that much to say because it's so brand new for me. Mm-hmm. I've never played them. No. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Okay. Uh, well, that's that's it. Uh, thank you so much for your time and Kryn's time, and yeah, <laughs> see you in Berlin. Bye. I'll see you there.